All right, everybody, welcome back to the Friends and Family Podcast. This is episode number three. If you missed the last one, we had our buddy Haas on. Nick is back. He was on Thanksgiving break, so he was gone in, uh, in with his girlfriend in Minnesota. And now we are here to go over an episode that I think hasn't been requested in the comments, but has been a very big topic. And a lot of people are wondering, I made a TikTok not too long ago that basically showed how many cars I've owned. And if you guys don't know, I have owned 30 cars and I'm 27 years old. And in this episode, I'm announcing a new car, potentially. Oh, okay, so, okay. I can't wait to go through this because this dude has owned every single car under the sun. Yeah, every single it's car. a bit ridiculous. It is, and I will cars say it's multiple ri- times too. It's ri- it is ridiculous. I'll just even admit it, it's ridiculous. So uh, I thought it'd be cool to have Nick here. I actually f- tried to film this solo, but I was like, this, this is not the vibe. I feel like Nick needs to be here for this. He was gone, so I was like, I'm going to try to uh, you know get an episode out. But... This is episode three. If you guys are new here, obviously I make videos. That's my main thing. And uh, I have a main channel. I make videos on sneakers. Usually we open this up with talking about the hottest sneakers that are out, but we just actually did that this week. Nick and I did an episode on the main channel. So check that out if you want to see all the opinions on the hottest shoes out right now. Uh, But yeah, Nick has been my longest friend that we've been into cars together. Actually, one of them, my buddy Matt, Growing up, his dad had a Viper that was like modded, and that was the first car that actually made me like get into cars. So, but other than that, Nick and I have been like the car friends. We have all of the friends. They're not into cars like we are. I mean, if you weren't a little bit into cars before we met, there was no way I wasn't going to get you into yeah, it. Exactly. So, like I said, uh, 30 cars total. I'm currently 27 years old. And um, a big thing to this, I think people are going to want to wonder because the TikTok that I made, all the comments were varying. People are like, he's got unlimited money glitch, which is hilarious. Obviously, you get the parents' money comments, which we don't really get those on YouTube anymore because people know. But TikTok, they have no clue who I am because it's like I'm just posting on there as this kid who looks 10. So basically, I want to give a background on how I make my money and all that because if people see us on TikTok, they might want to know. So I'm a YouTuber full time. I've been doing YouTube since 2016, and that is almost seven years now. It's almost eight. Yeah, that's seven. almost seven. So 16. Yeah. So seven years now I went full time with it. Uh, when I, I think it was a year and a half, two years in. And at that point I had a hundred something thousand subscribers and I was probably make, no, I don't know what, I think I was making like three grand a month. I think that was what I was making ad revenue wise. And I was working at the time I worked a regular job. I was a photographer at car dealerships as well as a full-time college student. And I did YouTube on my off time. I posted once a week. And I was able to build that up over a year and a half to get to that, to be able to quit my job. The reason I was able to quit my job is because I secured a brand deal. The first, the second brand deal ever, first one was SeatGeek. It was like five grand for three videos. The second one ever was a 12 month brand deal for $1,600 a month. And so $1,600 a month was going to cover all my expenses for a year for me to stop my work and try YouTube and see if it would work. So that's how I like quit because I was able to secure a brand deal that was going to basically cover all my expenses. And it made sense. I was like, I can actually do this now. Like there's never a perfect time, but to me, that was the perfect time. I I lined it up. I remember once this dude got that deal and got into his first like dream apartment, that setup was insane. And it really made you not that you weren't already buckled down, but it really made you buckle down because it made you realize how much you want to keep that and take it to the next level. Yeah. So I kind of was stretching at that point, getting that. I'll be honest. And it was because I knew that's what I wanted. And I had been, I didn't immediately move in there once I quit my job. I worked, I was able to do YouTube full time for a few months. And I was like, I was able to ramp up my ad revenue and make more money because I had all the time now. So it like, obviously I started making more money. I mean, I don't think I like did it too early. Like I was covering my expenses. Basically it turned out because I didn't really have, I had a small car payment. I didn't have much, but, and we'll get in all the cars, but the rent was like, 400. I basically only had $400 out of my pocket a month for that rent. It was like 2000 a month and I had $1,600 from the brand deal a month. So it was like all the extra money I was making, like it made sense. And it, then I was able to like double my money or whatever, keep it going to where it made sense. But that was my motivation. And like, sometimes that's dumb and it's risky, but also for me, some of my motivating factors is like working towards goals and like throwing myself out there. And Nick can attest to this from my mindset is go for it throw yourself out there and do it. The first time Nick filmed for me, he had filming experience, but never filmed anything for me. Never used my camera or a Sony or anything like that. It was all cannons and stuff before. And I said, I showed him how to do it. And I said, we're going to film today. I threw him into it. His first video was filming a car that we bought. 
and we'll we'll get into that. So that's kind of the brief gist of it. Um, that was long winded, but it's basically telling you guys how I make money. And now I have different versions of of money. I have YouTube, obviously. We have a store, online store. We do some merch drops. We have brand deals. We have all that. And uh, we have a, I have a management team now. Amazing. Um, shout out Andrew. And we, you know, have brand deals and all that. So we've been able to grow that exponentially. And here we are now. So that's kind of the gist of it and for how I make money. And I think that's a good baseline for people to know I mean, because that just leads into, so that's how he makes money. And this is what he likes to spend his money on. Mm-hmm. That's what that leads into really. Yeah. So I, yeah, I'm not going to go more. I was going to go into like write-offs and all that. So let's just start from the very beginning, the very, very beginning. When I wanted a first car, we were friends. We were friends before that. If you don't know that, go watch an episode. This is Nick. has been my cameraman for f- four years now. Yeah, watch watch the first episode. It goes into depth on how we met, how we've been friends over the years, and how we are where we are now. Yep. So, um, for some reason, all I wanted was a two thousand, like an early two thousands F one fifty. That's all I wanted. This dude needed a truck bad and i feel I don't like, know why that's all it's I wanted. not like you were a crazy like country boy or anything like that no. but let me say like this dude was into the bass fishing i love fishing and i know that you wanted something you could throw your fishing poles yep, yep. in the back and that get down sense. to the yeah. pond that would that for me had to have been like one of the main factors yeah so i wanted so bad and i'll say my dad and parents helped me buy this car or they bought me this car I'd be upfront about it. My first two cars, my parents helped me with. I'm so appreciative for that and thankful for that. And uh, that car, I'm trying to think of where I go into it because that one, I remember I wanted a, a two. So my ba- my dad basically told me, you are going to get a car to share with your sister. We're going to buy you a car to share with your sister. And the budget is $5,000. That's what you get. And back then, that's a good amount of money. Right now, $5,000 is nothing for a car. But back then, that was a good amount of money. You're lucky to get a car that runs and drives for exactly. today. So I had some stuff where like, I failed my permit test, which is stupid. I passed my driver's test on the first try. I'm so bad which at tests. Which is so funny to me. My high school GPA was so low. I hate testing. It's not. I'm so bad at tests. But I got my license on the first try. So my sister is 11 months older than me. She got her license. And my dad bought us an old... 1994 oh, uh, uh, Range Rover. And it was an amazing car. I actually love that. But the fact of the maintenance on it, because now looking back, I'm like, uh, uh, at the time, a 16-year-old Range Rover maintenance has got to be killer. And I know that car was in the shop a while. And they ended up getting rid of it shortly after. But well, the your p- parents had a new Range Rover at the time, too, that they were having to fix constantly, I feel like. Well, so theirs was an 06, and this was probably in 2010. 2012, yep. 2012. So it was six years old and it was having issues. Like we, at one time we were driving down the highway and the e-brake just turned on at 70 miles an hour. So, um, sketch they, we ended up getting rid of all the Range Rovers. It's funny. My dad has a Range Rover now, um, came back full circle. But the reason I say that, and again, dad, I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm just saying now what I know about Range Rovers, the maintenance and like it was in maintenance a lot. And, uh, but I so appreciate it. It was so cool to be like, we got a Range Rover. This is our car. Yeah, for sure. The problem is my sister wouldn't let me drive. When I had my permit, my sister wouldn't let me drive. And so I would. I was waiting, or actually I waited to get my permit because she wasn't going to let me drive or anything. And so one day my dad, I, I failed twice the permit test. And my dad was How like- How that's even possible? I don't know. I lost all motivation to go get my license because, or my, get the permit because I was failing and- my uh, sister, I knew she wasn't gonna let me drive that car. And then one day my dad wakes up and he goes, all right, we're going to take your permit test. And when you get your license, you can get your own car. And so that to me was like, boom, this is the motivation I need. I'm going to do this because before I was like, I'm not gonna be able to drive much anyway. So why does it matter? Cause my sister's going to drive. And so we go take it. I pass, get my permit and then license come boom, ace it first try. I can do the, the actual thing. I can't do the test, paper test. And uh, so brings us back to the first car. All I wanted was this F-150. Uh, and I told my dad, I said, if you get me any sort of early 2000s F-150, even like a one, whatever, I will wrap your company's logo on the whole car. 
because I want the truck that bad. And just drive around all the time just as an advertiser. For, I wanted it that bad. I'm not kidding. I remember sitting at the dining table telling him that. So the story of me getting my first car is pretty cool. Um, my dad takes me to test drive some cars. He takes me to test drive this F-150. It's a 2000, I think is in between a four and eight. I don't know. It's a red F-150 two wheel drive. My dad takes me to, uh, to test drive it. And I was like, oh my God, this is the truck. This is it. It's red, had gray interior. It was a base model. I do not care. Any car I'm thankful for and appreciative for. We go test drive it. My dad was like, whatever. He knew the guy who worked there. And we go home. And he's like, it's sold. Classic. Every time. Anytime there's something like your parents are, a car sold. Classic. Yeah, sorry. It's and I think I told anymore. this story a little bit on the first podcast. Um, so we go to launch like a week later and we're driving by and I see that a red truck F-150 in the parking lot of Home Depot. And I was like, huh. My dad's like, well, look at that. And I was like, looks like the one. He's like, let's go pull around. So we pull around. The one thing I knew about that F-150, I'm going to do quick because I talked about this before. The, the Ford logo was messed up. It had some, it was messed up. And I drive around. I was like, that's the same truck. And it's got the new tag on. I was like, that's the guy that bought my truck. I was like, dang, there it is. My dad tosses me the keys. He's like, here's your truck. And I was so surprised. So I'm going to put the photo up on screen. Me, my Ohio State hat on. Damn, they took an L this week. And uh, I got my first car. So I'm very appreciative of that. Thank you so much. That was literally my dream truck. That's all I wanted. And um, it, as we're going to keep speeding up with talking about uh, how the progression has gone with cars. You know how, real quick, you know how it is when you guys get your first car. I remember this dude got the truck and the first two places he went was my house and mm-hmm. Alex's house and was like, yo, check yep. this thing out. I couldn't pick them up or anything. Because you have to wouldn't have those take us for a ride because he, he was a six little, month rule. Yeah, he was uh, being a little bit of a wuss. But other than that, I wasn't trying to break the law. Um, so I had that car for I don't know how long. And so at the time I had that car, my parents bought it for me. I had to pay for anything involved with it. And the gas was like 85 bucks to fill up. And I was working at Dunkin Donuts. I was making probably 60 bucks a week working at Dunkin Donuts. You, were, you weren't even making enough to put gas in your car. No. So Nick and I would pull up to stop sign. Like I'd pull up to a red light and turn the car off because I thought I was going to run out of gas. Little did I know that was wasting more Bro, gas. I don't think we ever had the air conditioning on in that car one time. Let me tell you, dead heat of the summer, going to hit the fishing spot. Good luck with some AC. That was like, so after I had it for that long, I was working at Dunkin Donuts. Like my, my, First check from like it was bounced for sixty bucks. Bro, they didn't even have. The I remember money to you pay telling me. me that too. How anybody I tell that can like, a Dunkin' Donuts? How can your employers check? Now I can understand maybe like a small business or something like that, but Dunkin' Donuts. Well, they're sixty dollar check bounced. Yeah, right. But it's owned by uh people, and so it's like each Dunkin' Donuts is individual, so that money's coming out of their account. That but at specific. the time, that Dunkin' Donuts was getting piped. Like oh, it was they were crazy. They were getting killed. As in they were having a lot of business. Yeah. And so that they had to give me the, my check in tips, tip money in the tip jar. So that was great. My mom had to come in with me. So I couldn't afford to pay for the gas. And so after I don't know how long, this whole uh, time gap is going to be very difficult for me to, to give. But because I don't remember. But we we'll just say... I was 16 and I'm 20. There's 11 years in between all this. We ended up, I told my parents I couldn't afford it. The job I was working. I also started uh, working as an editor for somebody that's making 10 bucks an hour. That was like two jobs at the time. And in the summers, I would work at a pool and uh, did that. So we got rid of it uh, because I couldn't afford the gas. So I was like, I need something more fuel efficient. My dad's like, you're getting another Ford. So we ended up getting a uh, Ford Fusion as my next car. So this is, it was a 2010 to 12 Ford Fusion. It was a 2012 brand new in 2012. I remember this. It's brand new. The MSRP was like 12 to 15 grand. And um, that was a step up. And I was, you know, thankful. And I think we traded the car back into the, the Ford that we got. And I'm, again, I'm so thankful that my parents bought me cars. And if they were buying me the cars now, that'd be great. They're not. But... I always say that, like, if my dad would buy me a GT3 RS, that would, run it. That would be amazing. I would not, own it. Run it. Let's yeah, go. That would be so cool to not have to spend 200K of your own money. Yeah. Um, but we got the Ford Fusion. Well, what I want to say about the Ford Fusion is the Ford Fusion kind of led you into when you first started modding vehicles. Exactly. That's what that I was going to lead to. That car made you really want to start, like, doing modifications. So I got that car, and for my uh, high school graduation, my parents wanted to know what to get me. What I wanted was lowering springs and an exhaust. TN lowering springs and the mag- I don't know, Magnaflow exhaust. It was it was uh, either Magnaflow or Borla, something like okay, that. Okay, I'm going to admit something that is so bad here that Nick would probably say anyway, so I'm going to say it. 
I wanted to see what my car would look like lowered, so I would put sandbags in the back of the car to see it lowered. <laughs> this dude would ride around with like, I swear to God, not just like a couple sandbags, like, like four or five bags of sand from like Home Depot <laughs> that you would put in like a little kitty like sandbox. Oh my God. Just to make the car look lower. It was the most insane thing. Just based off, dude, do you know how much weight you had in your car that you're just carrying <laughs> around? It was like, dude, dude what the heck so are you doing right now? Nick still holds it over my head and I Bro, understand. I will say, I will literally hold that over your head till the end of time. Yeah. So I freaking... I did that. I wanted to lower it. So I ended up actually getting lowering springs like 200 bucks and exhaust was like freaking 300 bucks. We got it done at a discount tire. We got it done there. And I, it was sick. Tell them how loud that thing was. It was loud. It was cool. It set off a couple car alarms. Yeah, that thing was sick. I loved it. So I got that and then um, I started getting to car meets. And so I started going to car meets with like my buddy Paul. And I was following everybody to a car meet. First time like following people because I was like 18 and I got in a head-on accident. My fault. We were all going through a light. I was just following them. We weren't even going fast because the cars were lowered. So it's like we couldn't even go fast at the intersection and hit somebody head-on. Luckily, they were okay. I was totally fine. It was low speed. Totally good. Um, not good, but totally you know safe. Everything was fine. And uh, so that car was in head-on. We ended up... It didn't get told out, but we fixed it. And then immediately after we got it fixed, my dad's like, we just need to get rid of this car uh, because... We, it's an accident on the, the whatever like it's been we, we should just move on because it's an accident the car had an accident it's never the same so nick at the time had a mustang and all i wanted was a freaking mustang and um i we we're going through ford again i went to ford and i said i want a ford mustang without a manual but i could only get a v6 I wasn't getting a V8. No. There's no shot that money's And I, I had a V6 at that. the time, too. He had a V6, Club of America. So we ended up... They had a, a a manual base model blue with, like, cloth seats. And I was like, ugh, I don't really want that. So we ended up uh, getting from another dealer a Sterling Gray 2014 V6 Mustang manual. And I had to get it from another dealer. It comes in, buy it, and... I. I literally, I didn't know how to drive manual. That's what I'm stuck on. I was never thinking, driven manual. Before. I never driven a manual before. Actually, I did. I drove a Jeep, but Jeeps are so easy in a manual. Yeah, it's so you don't even have to do anything. You just easy. like bang, and yeah. it goes. So it was an older Jeep. So I had to have the salesman take me out to teach me how to drive it. He tried, he couldn't. My dad had to come pick me up from the dealership to drive it home because I could not drive it home. So that was like my first modded car. So the, it's funny that you say that because again, my first car. V6 Mustang mm -hmm. was a manual and let me tell you how excited I was to drive that car home from the dealership because I learned how to drive stick when I was like eight years old I've been driving stick in race cars ever since then and when I was finally able to drive my own car on the street bro she was like she was insane yeah and it was I mean I wish I could have done that but I ended up learning by just going out and driving on the streets and, yeah. and learning you know he is a very quick learner when it comes to anything car wise like I know once you learn that stick you'll never forget that's the same thing for anybody but for him he learned stuff like abnormally fast for his age especially behind the wheel of a car I think I I honestly don't think it's fast but I feel like it's very focused and so when I learn it I learn it like I, it takes me time, like when we're at a racetrack, when I'm learning apexes and stuff, to learn the track, it takes me a few tries. But once I clicks, it clicks and I'm good. But it's like the lead up is a little tough. Like yeah, he never, you don't revert back. You don't make the same mistakes you've made before. Once you figure out how yeah. to fix them, you got it. So I had that Mustang and I modded the living hell out of that car. I had five sets of wheels. I slammed on coilovers. I had grills. I had hoods. I, it got three accidents. Somebody backed into it in a parking lot. Somebody rear-ended me. And then another person backed uh, rear-ended me again. You did enough to that car to probably buy two 5.0s, two V8s. Probably. Like, and I bought a set of Voss and wheels on there. And I was working at my editing job. And I should not have bought those. I put on my credit card. It was like two grand. It was so Bro, dumb. That's insane. But see, I just... I, I, and I'm not saying... That's a financial mistake. I'm not saying to do that. But I could do it at the time. Like, and it took me a while to pay that off because my rent was like 400 bucks and I was not working at Dunkin' Donuts this time. I, I was working at the car dealership. I think I was doing the dealership and editing and I was making enough to like have the car. My car payment was like 300 bucks. 
so I'm trying not to like, I don't want to preach saying that you should make financial mistakes because I did. I'm just saying I took risks that motivated me to work harder and it worked, ended up working out. Um, so I bought Boston's. I did all this stuff. I went to Mustang week. I met some of my friends that are still my friends today. Um, like literally I've been to three people, two wedding. I've weddings coming up. I'm like going to be in the bridal party of a guy. I met Wade, a guy, my, one of my best friends, Wade, uh, he's getting married eventually. And he, you know, I'm gonna be a part of that. And I met him through Mustangs. Like we, we were in college. He pulled up next to me to light and he had, he was in my class. He pulled up next to me and looked over at me and I looked over and then the next day I walk in and he's like, is that you in the Mustang yesterday? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, it's me and my Mustang. And they were best friends after that. Like instant connection. So is the Mustang thing was probably like one of the longest periods of having cars. Like I met some, like my buddy Dylan Shand, if you guys remember, he, I, you might've seen him on my Instagram, my buddy Jaron, who runs Mustang fan club, a lot of great friends, Mason. And that was a great time. Um, I mean, also that Mustang was motivation too. Like you were doing content at the time. On Instagram, but- yeah you i'm saying like that mustang was making it so that you wanted you were doing even more content you were doing car content you were doing your own content you were constantly like bettering yourself on the content side yeah and so the mustang had i ended up selling the mustang i put it back to stock um sold it and that was just because i grew out of it i think i had that car for like two years you had that that's probably one of the longest you've owned owned a car so i had that car for a while i traded it in and i got my first luxury vehicle which was a mercedes c300 and um for some reason i was like you know the mustang was fun i wanted something a little more comfortable because i was also leaning it was an older c300 but i was leaning towards like you know i wanted to i wanted to get out a loud car and all that i wanted to something a little classier and i was working at the car dealerships at the time and um so i got the c300 it was like great mileage thing was freaking perfect red interior black it was so sick i got that because i really wanted a c63 v8 I, that car is a fourth of a C63. Like I remember how much you were looking at those, but I mean, the one that you ended up with was a nice, smooth daily driver. Like it wasn't as fun as you wanted it to be, yeah. but it looked good and it was comfortable. So I had that. And that's when I started YouTube, I had that car. Um, cause I was working my job in college, whatever. And so I had that, I had that car for a while, but I, mo- I put wheels on it and lowered it and that was it. I didn't do anything crazy to it. I wrapped the trim uh, but I had all my car friends still. And that was kind of like, we all kind of split the ways and stopped doing the Mustang stuff as much. But I'll just, let's move forward. Next up was my first brand new car. Or no, no, it wasn't. My Fusion was brand new. And the Mustang. My, I think the Mustang is brand new. My first brand new car that I'm buying legit off the showroom, which was my 2018 BMW M4. Now, I bought this after this. I was doing full-time YouTube at this point. I had my brand deal. I was making good money, starting to make good money. You know, I moved and I was in that apartment. So I was like, I can afford to get this car. It's my first like expensive car payment, but I was making enough money to do it. And I like, I talked to, when I make the, these decisions, I talked to Nick, my dad. I yeah. asked so many people questions on like financials and like, just like trying to justify this and that. Um, so like I say, I make, it's like, seems reckless, but it is very calculated. Everything I do with money is calculated. As, as calculated as humanly possible. I don't know. I overthink it. I don't honestly. know anybody who is more serious about keeping their money in control than you are. Have to be. So brand new M4, $84,000, $83,000 was MSRP. I paid. So I wanted to use one. Yeah. At the time. I know. I remember this whole thing. Cause you were with your dad you were going through the whole deal trying to figure out, you know, am I going to get used one? Am, am I going to get a new one? And your dad was just like pounding you on getting a new car and you did not want to do it because you didn't want to spend that extra what, like 15, 20 K. No. So that was 83,000 MSRP. We were probably going to get it for like 78 because you used to be able to get cars under MSRP. They had a used one for 72 that had carbon mods on it. It's around like 10 K less. Yeah. And my dad's like, no, get the new one. It's way smarter, blah, blah, blah. So I bought the new one. It was competition black with the it had everything except the carbon roof, but it actually had a sunroof, which is a more expensive option. Excuse me. And it also had the um had different wheels. It didn't have the comp wheels, but I bought that. I honestly only had that car for like a year, year and a half. And um I modded that, lowered it, put wheels, put exhaust. exhaust. It was pretty cool. And I ended up trading it in to get my first supercar. 
and uh, I'm going to keep speeding this up, but I had it for a while, and I love that car. I, freaking was I think so I got. Sweet. I just got one question for you, just a little quick break. Have you ever had to change the tires on a car besides like a nail? Oh, yeah. Bush nails, mainly. Besides, I mean, you've bought used cars, and the tires have been used, and you've had to put tires on the car, but I swear to God, you have never wore out a set of tires. Well, the car. reason is, well, whenever I get a car, I usually buy wheels and tires, so then yeah. I get new tires. True, true. So that's mainly the thing. So I don't really know. But I definitely have done oil changes and all that. Um, so I had that, and the M4 was great. I had it for a year, and I was just like ready to get my first like supercar because YouTube was taking off. We were it was doing pretty pretty good at that time, and so this is when Nick started working for me, and I wanted a supercar. The next, which I thought is a step up, it actually cost less than the M4 new. All right, let me go back to the new car. Buying that new, I shouldn't have done it. I paid the car is eighty three thousand dollars brand new. The M4. I bought it for 78, whatever. And then I, a year later, 12 months, 13 months, I sold it for $53,000. It lost $30,000 in value in one year. That is a depreciating asset. I mean, when you're buying it back in the day, so you can buy a car today and pretty money. much make money on it. Dude, back then, buying that car, it was almost like a, I don't even want to say like a death sentence, but it's almost like you are losing money instantaneous but you're getting a new car and you know a it. car like that and you knew it you drive it off a lot you lose 10 grand you know it that's yeah, been the thing forever our parents is exactly what they would say like that was the thing it's like you almost lost 50 percent on that car in like a year so one of my first supercar and i said this was an upgrade on my tiktok and people commented and were like that's not an upgrade m4 to gtr is not an upgrade and so i could see interior wise technology wise yes but driving and speed I liked it. I will. I would to this day probably take a GTR over a newer GTR over an M4. People just love. They love to hate on GTRs, and I mean, I guess I kind of get it. The interior is not that crazy, but that car compared to an M4, I'm not touching an M4 for a GTR. And that that was my first car. I tracked. That was fun. It's a little heavy, but that thing is capable. It's got power. I did full bolt-ons. I did full bolts. I did tune intake exhaust, and. I guess I didn't do something. I didn't think I technically had full bolt-ons, but I had like 600 wheel probably. Um, that was fun, and I loved that car. That car was awesome. So I paid uh, 74000 for that. And so that was, you know, back then, that's what they were trading for. It's a black edition, 2015, and uh, it was great. Only issue that I had with that car, why I ended up getting rid of it, is because like the interior felt like a Nissan Altima, low key. It was the older ones. Every time you got in it, it would be like you'd be sitting in it and you'd be, you would know you're in a GTR. But then when you would drive through like past a couple windows or something like that and really get to see the reflection, that's the only way that that car hit for you because you didn't feel like you were in like a super nice luxury supercar when you were in that car. Because the interior is, and everybody says that the interior is just lackluster. So. I had that for like six months. And the reason why I went to this next car quickly, this is the first quick jump, was because the guy I bought the GTR from, Nexus Auto Broker, shout out, shout out Nexus. Um, he hit me up and he, I was talking to him and he, I, and I said something about like R8s. I like R8s. He's like, well, I got one coming in. And I was like, I'm interested. You know, if the deal's right, I'm interested. Like I definitely, I, I think at the time, like, I didn't know if I want to spend that much money on a car because at this point my car payment is like a thousand bucks, which is a lot. But like going to that, that's like a next step up. That, that car is like 150 grand. So he says I'm getting an R8 and I'm like, I'm interested. Just what are the details? What's the price? When he first goes, it's Nardo gray and orange. And I'm like, huh? It happens like, to what? be the wildest colored combo possible. I'm like, what? And I'm like, orange is my favorite color. Like, Let me see a picture. He sends a picture and I'm like, I, I don't care what the price is. I want this car. But I'm like, it's a one of 25. It was that edition. The retail is 225. This is going to be a $200,000 car. I can't, I can't buy a $200,000 car. He sends me the price as 150. And I go, I think I can make that work. I think I can make that work. Did all the, got the financing ready. He gave me what I paid for my GTR back with the mods on it. And then we traded for my first Super, I guess that's a, it was the second supercar, but that was like my first exotic car. Some people don't think it, all right, it's exotic, true exotic slash yeah. supercar. And I, it was 150 grand, and um, that was like my dream, that was a legit dream car. And I keep saying these are my dream cars every time I make these videos and stuff. I think you should be able to up your dream cars. Like at the time, an M4 was my dream car because I didn't know if I was gonna be able to afford a freaking whatever car. 
but I keep setting my goals higher and getting to achieving those. Well, you can, you can definitely always change your dream car. Your dream car has always changed. Definitely. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I have to say, when you were getting that R8 initially for the first time, I have not seen you more excited to do something ever. When you were getting that, especially buying a car, like I've seen you excited to get a car. Like you've had a few cars that we're about to get into that are nuts, but it's like, I don't think I've seen you more excited to get into a car than that one. And I think that car was me and that's why I did it. Um, so all right, I'm put we custom wheels with Butler, shout out Butler again, Danny. They made custom wheels with Savini. We built them for the car splitter lowered exhaust. I had three exhausts on that car. That was kind of just like, what we did when we were bored during COVID is like, yeah, I'd get a new exhaust. Put an exhaust on the car and it'd be like, oh, it's not as loud as I want to. Then it'd be put another exhaust on the car and it'd be too loud, way too loud. And then it would finally get to the perfect one at the end. Like, oh, three little bears story on the exhaust. Yep. So I had the R8 and uh, me and my wife were about to get married. We were engaged at the time and she still had her Jeep from high school, which was a 2010 Jeep Grand Cherokee. First car, same car. And I was like, she wouldn't get rid of that car. She would not let me buy her a car. We weren't married yet. We're engaged and which is fine. I wasn't like pressing to buy her a car, but once I bought the R8 and we were like a month away from getting married, I was like, I'm buying you a car now. Like, no, I I think we actually waited till we're after we're married to buy it actually. Cause I put it, it was under Sophie Neville. I was like, we're married now. I'm buying you a car. I have an R8 you just can't do this. You can't, I can't drive an R8, you drive a $3,000 Jeep. Like it's just not fair. It just doesn't make sense in my opinion. So finally I, we went to search for cars. Um, I remember on the, our, my honeymoon, I was like looking at cars for her, like whatever it is. My, that's my relaxing. I mean, also it was time for that Jeep to go. It was, it wasn't on its yeah. last leg, but it was close. We hear a funny story from that. Sophie was driving it and it hit 99, it hit a hundred thousand miles. And she was called me cause she, we live long she lived in college and we we're long distance she always call me for like hours and she we're out, she was on the phone driving home i think and she goes harry my car just rolled over a million miles oh and i'm my like God. sophie your car did not roll a million miles like this a hundred thousand miles and so we ended up trading that in got three thousand dollars for it and uh, we did a lease on a 2019 q5 that is the only car i've ever leased i leased it because i mean at, it, the, time, at the time the deal was like you could have that car for like 200 bucks a month. So it was like, why not? So they had 120 Q5s on the lot. It, I got, the deal was 299 a month for 7,500 miles a year for a $50,000 car. And I was like, yeah, sure. This is like, I think COVID had started. No, COVID didn't start yet. Not yet. No. So, cause I was wondering if it was like deals, but it wasn't. It was just like they had 120 of the cars on the, on the lot where now they have like two and it's getting more now, but I bought her that. 29 a month and that car's been amazing. We still have that car. We drove that car here today. Yeah. We've had it for three years, the longest standing car. The lease is up in January and I'm buying it out from the lease and it's going to be 27 grand to buy it out. Originally 54,000 MSRP. I think it's a good deal and it's worth like 30 something. So we're going to talk later because I tried to get rid of this car two days ago and my wife said no. And we'll talk about that. That sounded like a Baltimore no. <laughs> so at this time we had the R8 and the Q5. This is the turning point where we're filming and we're like, we can't film these videos in an R8 every time because no. we're driving to Atlanta. We're driving to freaking all over the place. And so I was like, this is where I need a second car. This is the first time um, that I need a second car. And I didn't know if I was going to do that, but like I needed it. So we came up with the idea somehow to get a Raptor. I, I was like, let's get a Raptor. I don't know what we were doing, like a ton of research on cars and stuff. I don't even remember what we were comparing to, but all of a sudden it was I like, think it was like a Jaguar F type. I don't I know. I really want to get a Raptor. And then it ended up being like, I want to put some tires, wheels on it, wrap it. And it was just, we like, started a, a, a car channel, yeah. this channel that you're on right now and started posting content. I was like, we can get a truck and mod it and that'd be good content. So we, we found a truck at gas motor cars, shout out them. I bought so many cars from them and it was twenty eight thousand dollars. Had one hundred fifty five thousand miles. It was black, but it was previously owned by a GM of or an owner of a Ford dealership. So it had a, a mile long service history list. Oh yeah, it just so right before he bought it, it all had all the Fox shocks rebuilt. Every mm-hmm. like major issue that you would need to do to that performance truck, it had redone. Yeah. So 
that happened. Uh, we bought that for 28,000 bucks, black on black. A lot of miles, but was great. Freaking amazing. So we get that and immediately we go to get it wrapped to match the R8. Uh, we did, we filmed wrapping that and that was sick. It, it was, was great. Ton of fun. Put 35 inch tires on some fuel wheels on the Raptor and that was it. And we used that for a while. Um, I don't know how long we had that. We had that for a good amount of time. We used it a lot for videos. I used it when I was moving. Um, it came in handy, but I was living in the city. So ultimately why it ended up not working. And when I would talk about this, it seems like it's very quick, but it wasn't that quick. Like there was a month, we had these cars for months, some a year. And uh, so I, the Raptor where I bought a townhouse, my first house here, and it didn't fit in the garage. So that was like, at that point I was like, all right, I think I'm ready for something else. It doesn't fit in the garage. It's too big. And I wanted some luxury again. Cause it was like, F-150 is great. The Raptor, but um, I wanted something else. So this is when I traded the F-150 and I got $24,000 for it, which i am buy it for a heartbeat for 24 grand right now. And they're coming back down. They're like 28 again. I traded that for a 2017 Range Rover full size, murdered out. That thing was and boss. That, it was boss. That thing was baller, clean, dirty girl central. Yeah, I, that's this his saying. Him and his buddy Blake. I don't know what the heck that is, but they say that. And I, I got that. I was like, fifth, uh, how much was it? Sixty thousand, I think I paid. And um, it was a great car. I had to get some stuff repainted, but murdered out. It was exactly what I wanted, and this was probably in 2020. So it was a good deal. The appreciation on those things was crazy how much they went down, but I bought that and at least you didn't buy that one new. So at this point I've had the R8 for a year and a half, almost two years now. And I started meeting a lot of car friends. Uh, we talked about the Haas. I met Haas, met a couple of car guys hanging around a lot of them. A lot of them at Huracans, Benadors. And I was like, you know what? I've loved this R8. I had a great time with it, but I'm ready to, be a Lambo boy. I want to like the trash talk became real once you met them. <laughs> yeah, Haas specifically is like an R8. It's not exact. All the other guys, they they didn't. They're like it's a great car. They like my spec specifically. They don't like everybody. Everyone says this. I don't like R8s, the exotic guys, but I like your car because of the spec and everything. It's actually a decent spec, and I mod it right. And maybe I don't think they're just saying that because they would. Like I said, these guys were like Haas was like that car. No, it's not an exotic. It's not bad, but it's not an exotic. So. I wanted a Lamborghini. I was like, I'm ready for a Huracan. It was similar to the R8. I went and test drove it. It is a totally different car. Totally different. The Audi dealership here had a 2015 Huracan 580 black on black with 10,000 miles for 185,000. I paid 155 for the R8. I think they ended up, I traded it in for 148. I didn't lose. I lost like five grand in a year and a half. I was like on this expensive car, not a big deal. So I traded that in, paid 185, 183 with these prices. And I'm saying it's like what they listed it for. I negotiate probably like two grand off, um, on average. So I, I get the Huracan and that was my big Huracan Lambo bought my first Lambo moment. And it was awesome. It was like surreal. Like I remember I went and picked it up with Haas. It was no. COVID and Haas had the Aventador, a uh, red roadster. So sick. And we ended up going together and drove to get lunch. We went and picked Nick up to go get lunch in my Lambo with his Lambo for the first time. And it was cool. It wasn't, it wasn't his Lambo. It was, he was used, had it for six months, whatever. But that was like my first big boy car. Uh, they're all big boy cars, but whatever. That was like the pinnacle moment. Like buying a Lamborghini is I mean, like the thing. If you're like, when you're buying a Lamborghini, it's a lot different than buying an Audi, yeah. buying a Porsche, yeah. buying stuff like that. It's just that little tick of an extra level. Yeah. So at that point I had the Range Rover and Huracan black and both black. And I did a reveal video. It was a good, that was really, I love that video. We always watch that one back. And so yeah, ha- hanging out of the back of what was I? I was hanging out CTSV of the back. Wagon. No, 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 no. That was for the uh, oh, R8. R8. When I was hanging out of the back oh, of Raptor. Haas's Raptor. Yeah. I, oh my God. That was probably the most uncomfortable I've ever been. It was also 95 filming. degrees and it had a beanie on. Like Dude, it, I was burning up and also like all we had was this tiny little rig with like a box dude i i don't know how that footage is as smooth as it is but we got lucky yeah so i had both of those cars and um the huracan i i meet the great thing about the huracan and the art platform that they're similar 
is that I was able to move, I put the wheels on there. So immediately transferred the wheels, didn't lose any money on that. Exhaust, I was able to put it on the Huracan. I had to mod it a little bit, but it was like a couple hundred bucks. They had to buy new exhaust. So that immediately transferred over and saved me all this money from having to do that all over again. Those wheels, I, it was kind of a sponsored deal, but those wheels retail are like 12 grand. So like I wasn't gonna, I didn't have to pay that much money for them. But I, like I'm saying, a set of wheels, nice wheels is expensive. They're two piece wheels. They're actually sitting right there, funny enough. Um, the the Huracan, I'm trying to think where it goes. I modded it and then Haas and I came up with this idea to wrap our cars and match them. Now, this is where everything went wrong. For real. We did, the wrap was sick. We did a blue. We had we did the orange calipers on the Huracan. We painted their red originally. We wrapped it up like a Miami blue, and Haas and I matched. But my car got it took three weeks to do my car. Finished before him. Shout out Top Car Wraps. They just wrapped the Range Rover. They're best in Atlanta, in my opinion. They're the best for car wraps. And um, I go to other people for like the clear bras and stuff. Um, but they wrapped it put a wing on it, carbon fenders. Those were sick. And that car came out looking like a freaking Hot Wheel. That thing was so cool. It literally could have came straight out of Hot Wheel plastic. It was so cool. That was like, it came out crazy. But with that craziness came something that was not, I should have expected, but I didn't because the car was black before. It came with a lot of attention. I mean, you should expect it, but the amount of attention that you got was, it was not warranted. And before, when it was black, I didn't really get that. Like, it, I got attention, but nothing like this. Because it's a black car. It goes into the radar. Looking back, I should have kept it black. And I would probably, I might and, still have that and car. And I, I will sit here and say that I did tell you to keep it black a couple times. I don't remember that. Like, but you don't remember me telling you that it looks so good black? I was like, oh, yeah, you kept do, saying, yeah, yeah. do you not understand how good this car it looks did. black, bro? But I was like, I wanted to go for the crazy color. And they were sponsoring the wrap. So. Yeah, which is nothing wrong with it. So I get the car gets done and I have it for maybe honestly what I actually one of the worst scenarios that happened it was black actually. So really it was black mm -hmm, still? I remember it was still black and that should have been a sign not to wrap it. So this is a story that I've all my friends know. I haven't said it much on the internet because it was like traumatizing for Sophie very much, me a, a little a good bit. Uh during, I think it was during COVID. It was definitely during COVID. I bought it, the car during then. I think it was like 2020. I, yeah, it definitely was. I ended up, Sophie and I decided to go out to lunch. And 12 o'clock, I, I was done filming and I was like, do you want to go grab a sandwich? Sure. I go pick her up in the Huracan. Go to this place that's freaking middle of the day in the city. There's a million people walking around. Go grab lunch. We're going to get back in the car. Some guys roll up. And um, they came in, let me get some money. I was like, I being honest right now, I don't have any cash. I literally don't carry cash. So I didn't have any. And I would, I remember specifically in my cars, I'd always carry a couple bucks to hand out to these guys because they would a couple, they're called the water boys in Atlanta. And they would stand on the corners and they'd ask for, you know, they'd want to sell you a water bottle. And I didn't want waters, but I'd give them like a dollar just to be like, you know, here you go just so like some sort of support. I did that for a, like a lot. And to, so I did support, you know, that kind of thing. But then the uh, four of them kind of rolled up on me and I was like, I don't have any money. And they're like, oh yeah, well, we're about to take your car and your girl. And I'm like, what? I was like, why would I give you money for going to talk to me like that? And so I get in the car. I'm like, Sophie, let's get in the car. Let's go. I get in the car and I go to back out and there's only one way in and out of this place. These guys come up and throw some bird scooters down and block off the exit and are standing there. And I'm like, what is going on? So I like crack my window and I'm like, guys, I don't have money. You know, I'm sorry right now. I support before. I'm sorry I don't have money, but I'm with my girl. I'm trying to go on a nice date. Can I, you know, let's not, let's just, I don't want to do this. I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't want to do, but I was just basically... And the time I don't remember, and I have a video recording of this happening. I, it, I had my owl cam, and I've never looked back at it because it was, like, so bad. Yeah, I was going to say, I've never seen that. So, basically, the guy, one of the guys, or he's a younger guy, he comes, like, he, I cracked him when he was talking. He reaches in the car. He's, he's like, you're giving us $100 each, or you're not leaving here. 
And I was like, bro, I'm not, he's like cash at me a hundred dollars each and you're not leaving. I'm like, bro, I'm not sending $500 right now for this. It's like, I'm not doing that. So I'm like, how do I get out of this scenario? Sophie's freaking out. I don't like, I've never been in this scenario and I'm trying to figure out what to do and my instincts kick in. And so I'm like, all right, what do I do right now? I see them. They're like trying to reach in and start grabbing the door handle to open the door. And I'm like, shit, this is not good. So there's a guy standing in front of the car with scooters there. He steps, moves to the side a little bit and I gun it and I go straight over the scooters right over them. And I freaking whip out of there. This is broad. There's people everywhere. Nobody's helping me whip out of there. And I immediately, I'm like, they're about to do something. I'm going to call the police. So I call the police. I'm going to hold for five minutes. Finally get a hold of them. I'm like, Hey, this just happened. They just tried to take, they were trying to take the car, trying to you know, get me for some money. They're like, Oh yeah, that just happened to some people down the road, uh, to another person. We're looking into it and hung up. And I'm like, what? Are you yeah. kidding? At the time, that stuff was happening constantly yeah. and nothing was being done about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And Haas talked about that in the last video. So that happened. And then um, some stuff happened with our house. And we ended up moving to the suburbs because people were trying to break in our house. And I talked about this in the Haas episode. I was just like, we got to get out of here. This is all that's happening. So the car ended up, was I got it wrapped, which again, I should have not known with the attention. And the reason why I think that happened, because it doesn't happen to all my buddies, is because I look young and it's easy to mess with me. Whereas that when you, as people who look like adults, people tend less to mess with them. But I was kind of a target because I just look young. So that, I and I get now looking back, like that's why it happened to me less them. And this stuff happened to them. Like Hoss had many times and I've been in the car in really bad scenarios. Well, I've been, I was in the car behind Hoss while he was in his Rolls Royce while about five or six guys were jumping on his hood, putting water bottles all over his car, like just doing everything they could to keep him from moving. Yeah. And like this stuff was happening. Like they were like, there's been people that like died over the, like with the water bottle boy stuff. Like it, it got pretty crazy and they've kind of, they've gotten a lot better about it. Um, but it was like, it was, it was a pretty bad scenario. And so I get, it turned blue. And then I, I was up in the suburbs and I had like, some people weirdly following me and they like kept trying to like, it looked like they're trying to close me in at something. And I like ended up getting out of there. And that was the final star. Where I'm like, I'm done. Like I'm getting messed with too much. I can't do this anymore. Like it's too much. It's too stressful to drive this car. So I'm getting rid of it. So I started doing research on what car I want to do get next because, and at the time the car market was normal. It just wasn't like, cause it's during COVID. It wasn't when it started to go up. It was actually a down car market. So I start trying to figure out what I want next and Porsche comes to my mind and I was like, Nick always talks about, we always see GT3, GT3 RS. I always talk about, so I wasn't ever really talking about RS. I was just yeah. constantly, constantly talking about a 2015 GT3 yep. to me at the time. Like that was the car. Yep. So and you kept talking about wanting to track more stuff like that. So it was literally. Yeah. So actually, I I never tracked the R8 in the two years I owned it or a year and a half. I tracked the Huracan. Real. It was real drive. Thing was so fun to track. And I will say, even to this day, I'd been I've been on the track with him in a GT3 RS. I've been on the track track with him at a GT3. I've been on the track GTR. with him in a ton of cars. And none feels more raw race car than that rear wheel drive Huracan did. Yeah. Something about going through the turn and being able to slide that car, not being all wheel drive. And you know, all of the Lambo race cars, the guys that race the race cars, they're rear wheel drive as well. So it being rear wheel drive just really made that car feel like it belonged on the track. I cannot tell you like, dude, I had so much fun in the passenger seat training you in that car. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade that for almost any other car on the track for real. Yeah, that was great. And so like what you'll hear about these stories is like, I track my cars. Like I buy these cars and I, I with the intention of driving them. I'm not, I don't drive buy a Porsche GT3 RS to freaking drive it on the street all day. Like to go I, down to Publix and back, which I did, but I also tracked it. So I found locally at my Porsche dealership, they had a 2019 GT3 white carbon buckets with like 4,000 miles for 150 grand. And I was like, Oh my God, this is great. But it was a little weird because it was way, way less aggressive. It performs, but it was way less aggressive of a car looking wise. So it was very subtle, but it performs great. I went and test drove it. They wouldn't even let me drop, take it over 4,000 RPMs uh, when on the test drive. And I'm like, dude, I have a 
Lamborghini Huracan. What are you talking so, about? Like, did you pull in in the Lambo to do yes, the test? Yes, to trade in. That's funny. I'm like, that's dude, actually he's really like, the, funny. The manager doesn't want it going over 4,000 RPMs. I'm like, what are you talking about? I was like, I'd have a 600. I'd tuned that car too. I had 600 horsepower freaking Lamborghini. Like, this car is meant to be zinged out. So I didn't, but I loved it. The seating position, everything was great. So I bought it for 100 and something. I traded the uh, Huracan and lost a little bit of money on that, but I traded it in because I had a buddy at a time who wanted to buy that car and he had a Porsche at the time. And so I structured the deal as like, I'm trading this in. Somebody's going to trade in their Porsche and buy my Huracan. And that deal is set. Basically it wasn't in writing, but it was set. And so they gave me a better deal on the Porsche. I paid like 150 grand for that 2019 with like, no, it was 1700 miles. I'm not saying 4,000, it was 1700 miles. It had nothing. It was a guy was who had new. 12 Porsches and it was like one of those guys that buys whatever they asked so he can get the, you know, GG3 RSs. Yeah, he got an allocation for that car, built it, drove it for a thousand miles and then traded it in. Yep. So I have the Range Rover and this at the time and the uh, GT3 was awesome. And at that point, the Range Rover was great for filming, but it was like when we we're driving, it was so big and heavy. Like we were like, we can do with something a little smaller. So I ended up trading the Range Rover in for a 2015, I put the year wrong on there, 2015 BMW M3 manual. It was white, had not too many miles, but it was like 50 something grand. And I was like, I want another manual car. So I had the Porsche GT3 and a, a, a M3 manual. And this is this is kind of when you started getting into like the more fun, like yeah. daily car era. Yeah, exactly. So did that deal and that was like, I I don't, I think I lost a little bit of money on the Range Rover, whatever. That's what was happening back then. And so I had the Range Rover for like, I don't know how long. The dates on I have in here are not right. But I had that and then I had the white Porsche. I had the m3 manual and then i bought the e46 m3 at yeah. the same time and you had both m3s at the same time yeah, yeah. i did so i paid thirty three thousand dollars for a 2004.5 bmw e46 m3 in emola red for my buddy greg and it had suspension it had everything done everything that needed to be done greg and the last owners took care of so it was ready to go mountain car perfect manual black manual seats on the inside it was very it was a rare car and that car was sick we were driving the shit out of that we that was our film car for a little bit we daily that for more time and more like for more time and we took it out more times than i thought you would take out a car like that yeah that was one of your favorite cars to daily drive so we ended up uh that car some happened to it where I was driving on the highway and a sheet metal hit the roof oh, and man, dented it and that, stuff. Yeah. That was bad. But I have the M3. I have two M3s at this point and I have the white GT3 RS or GT3. And I was like, oh, let me tell you, I actually didn't tell Nick that I traded the Huracan in and I surprised him with it. I had, I said, come over to my house and let's film. And uh, I said something about a car and I opened the garage and there's a G he's like, he's like, you didn't get a GT3 as I'm opening it. I and, remember this. I remember this. And, and I, he was like, no, you did not. And so we uh, we ended up doing that. I have a video of our first ride in that because I had the owl cams back then. So I have like your face and you're like, remember, oh I, my God. I was walking up and I was like, there is no way this dude finally got a GT3. Yeah. And then he opened the garage and it was like, dude, it blew me away. So that sparked my passion of like really focusing and like loving, like detailing and want to be perfect but also being track ready um i've like built my garage out a bit because i wanted to detail it so i have the gt3 and i'm the type of guy i'm full send i bought like i bought the m4 because i if i would have bought it a 440i or something i would have been like i want the m4 because i knew that's what i want and there's nothing wrong with the the gt3 or the 440i whatever but like for me i want to work hard to get the the mecca and I had the GT3 and I go, and it was, we tracked it to road Atlanta thing was so good at driving, but I, I was like, that thing was really good on the track, but it did need more downforce. Yeah. It so, definitely needed the bigger wing. So I, I mean, I was looking at prices and I paid 155 and at the time those GT3 RSs were like 20 grand more. And I'm like, I'm full sending. I was like, I like Porsche. And I couldn't find a GT3 RS at the time, and I didn't think I wanted one. I wanted like the the little less aggressive. Nope, I wanted the full sense. So I found uh, TJ Hunt has gone to West Coast Exotic Cars over in California, 
and uh, he's this hunter over there, and I had seen that in the videos. And one day, I saw, they posted a story of a, a silver GT Silver GT3 RS that they're like coming soon, and I'm like, hmm, I'm gonna message him. That put the idea in my head. So I messaged messaged them, or I got in contact with Hunter somehow. I think I DM'd Hunter actually personally, and uh, said I'm interested in this car. They were listing it at one seventy four ninety nine, and one seventy hundred seventy five thousand. And well, they actually were going to list it for more. And Hunter actually hooked me up. He's like, you know, I want to build a relationship, you know, whatever. And I was like, sweet. And I was like, I'm going to take care of you too. Cause he's into shoes. So I ended up getting him some shoes also, but they listed for 174. It was a 2016 with 3000 miles. And he said, what do you want for your car? And so I basically was like, I don't know. The car market is starting to go up a little bit. And the LA car market is different than Georgia. I told him I want what I paid for the car, $150,000. He said, sure, no problem. We'll do that. And I'm like, okay. Uh, all right. So then it was tw- basically 20 grand more to get that car. I got my financing squared. So I'll say on most of these cars, anything over $100,000, I'm going to finance. Like the M3, the E46, that's cash. But a lot of the stuff, I don't want my cash out because I'm just sitting there looking at the cash sitting there when the cash could be used for work and money and our investments, whatever. I just don't think it's smart to have that much money sitting there, even if you have the ability to. And I think you should have the ability to. And so we make this deal. It took like two weeks to get here because it had to ship it from California. I had to, he picked my car up, go to him seven days. Then I had to pick, once he got my car, send that car here. And that car came, we picked that up together. We wrapped the M3, the, the daily, uh, the, um, 2015 F80 gray. It was an auto gray. I remember. And we picked up that freaking GT three. And I was like, Oh my God, this car is insane. I remember you taking your first couple rips down the street and dude, the way that that car feels like you get in a GT three and Porsche has that thing ready to go for the track. They do, but you get in that car and it's like, okay, now we see what you had on that last page of the book that you kept yeah. off the last car. That extra bit. So like, that car is nuts. Yeah. So I had that. And then I think around the time I, okay, no, this isn't happening yet. I have the GT3 RS. I had it for six months and it had 3000 miles on it. And I put 3000 miles on it. We tracked it, took it to Barber. We tra- I tracked in the rain. That was my first rain track day thing was amazing. I mean, out of and out of all the cars that we have talked about so far, this is the one that I had to beg and beg and beg this dude not to get rid of. Yep. This is the one car I was like, dude, just I remember that, yeah. do not get rid of this one. This is the car. So I had this car for six months. We start coming, things start opening up from COVID. And this is when the car market starts, has started amping up. Booming. And I look up values of my 3RS and it is worth $30,000 more than I paid six months ago after putting 3,000 miles on it. And to me, I'm like, man, I have an opportunity here to make make money and, and capitalize on this while it's hot because I thought it may be a, a quicker bubble. was not. Um, gas motor cars actually... They had texted me or I was talking with Nick or something and they had just got a 2017 Nardo gray R8. And I was like, I kind of missed my R8. This is not a bad price. The R8 was 150 grand. So it wasn't that high. And I had the M3. I sold the E46 through gas. I I think I sold it for 45,000. I paid 30. No, I think I thought it for like 37. I think I sold it for 42, but I had to get the $5,000 transmission service done oh, right yeah, before yeah. I sold it. So that nicked off $5,000. There's uh, the transmission had to be replaced. It was, I think it was like the clutch or clutch something. Or something. Yeah, the- so I made, I made like five grand on that um, car, which is cool. I think, I think I made that. I don't remember. And then, so I, at the current time I have the GT3 RS silver, the Nardo gray 2015 M3 and that's it. M3 is my daily. We're going to, uh, we're talking to gas, the R8, and they also at the same time had a 2016 Macan Turbo. And that car was, um, the R8 and the Macan were the same together, was as much as 
what my GT3 RS was worth. So I structured a deal or I didn't really do the deal. It wasn't like trading one car for two, but it's basically that. And I ended up getting over like $205,000 oh, after everything, trading and all that for my GT3 RS six months after putting 3,000 miles on it. And that's why I knew Nick didn't want me to get rid of it. But I was like, Nick, one, that silver was not my favorite color for a 3 RS. So like that was the reason if it was a color I really love, like red or purple or something, I would be more inclined, but the color was kind of boring. I didn't I mean, want to wrap it. Also, I mean, the biggest thing is I definitely understand the money aspect of it. And out of any of the cars that were going up in value that entire time, that one was the most. Yep. It was just a weird thing where it's like you bought it, you got a great deal. And then all of a sudden it was like, everybody wants one six months after you bought yep. it. So I get the R8 and the Macan Turbo and the Macan Turbo is now my daily. And then I uh, listed my other M3 for sale at gas private, like a, uh, just for sale, not trade or anything. And then we sold that for 63,000. I paid 53, but I modded it. So I broke even because I wrapped it and all, wheels and all that. So current garage, Macan Turbo white, and then R8 Nardo gray, but not, it was a V10 plus, but it wasn't any addition. And that was it. I had the Macan. That was probably one of the longest dailies we had. It was great. It's yeah. A little quick and speedy. Super, super smooth car. That thing was really easy for us to just hop in, go get our filming done. It had room in the back to throw mystery boxes in, shoe boxes in. And it was like, it was just smooth. It was just an easy car to drive. Yep. So I don't know what's happening in between here, but I was like, I want to try something else. We had the Macan. We 75,000 miles. I think it was, we, we had our, did our job. And I was like, let's try a new type of daily. So I bought a 2018 M5 for 84 grand. This car was sick. 600 horsepower is blue. Blue is not my favorite color, but it was a good deal because the car's at a Ford dealer. So every time I take this thing, took this thing out to go drop off packages, go do anything, run a couple errands, dog, the thing ripped. There was no, like I, I ripped the M3s, like trying to follow you and your R8 and stuff. And I'd driven the cars before. Man, that M5 for how big it is, that car is massive, but it just scoots. It moves. Yep. So we're over halfway down, but I'm going to start speeding it up just because we've been going for an hour already. I get the M5 and then the R8 just didn't feel the same to me because it wasn't my orange R8. It wasn't my car. And after like three months, I was going to start modding it. And I was like, I'm not just going to mod this car because the seats were different. They didn't have any of the orange accents. So uh, the place I bought it from, or not the place I bought it from, I actually found, I wanted to try a McLaren next because I hadn't had a McLaren. So I traded that in for a 570. That was $157,000. It was a white with peanut butter interior. It's pretty cool. 570. I was going to go 600 LT, but I didn't want to spend, you remember this. I, it was like a $250,000 for 600 LT and 150000 for this one. And I knew the 600 LT did not hold its value like a 570 did or a 720 did. The 600 is that sweet spot where it's a track car, but it was expensive and I feel like wasn't going to hold its value. So I got the 570 and... Well, for me, just real quick, that was your toughest move was to the 570. Toughest as in... Like I'd say out of all of the supercars that you've owned, that one was my least favorite. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I didn't have that car for long. I had it for like three months, but the same place I bought it from ended up having a 2019 3RS with the new technology that was crazy. It was owned by Harrison Williams, I think is his name. Harrison, it's, his name's Harrison. I saw I remember. It's, I can't remember his name, Harrison. I think it's Williams. Uh, he makes content and he does these rallies and he had done a, it's black with stealth PPF, green accents. He'd put a massive, Top Massive, mount, like GT3, GT2 style wing on there. Massive. It had carbon, 1016 carbon everything and had a green roll cage inside, carbon buckets. And I paid $220,000 for it. So I traded that in and we sat there for a while. It had these like, crazy carbon mirrors and I almost didn't buy it because it was in rough shape. It didn't even have rear windows. It had like these race car inserts. It had like 30,000 miles on 30, it, 30,000 right? miles, which I then learned that Porsche owners don't like high miles. And I know why, because, you know, everybody wants the... These Porsche owners are like older guys who want like a brand new car. So that car sat for a while. That's so why I was able to get a little bit of a deal on it. And they gave me what I paid for my 570. So it worked out. And I got that car and I, I fixed everything. I bought, I bought uh, rear mirrors. Um, windows. I had replaced bolts and splitters and this, and I made it perfect. And I redid the PPF because it was rough. And I freaking did love that car. 
like <laughs> I know we haven't there's one car we're about to talk about because he's owned multiple of these cars but at the time before you got the last one that you did that was like the sickest looking GT3 RS possible if it, it had was, it looked like a race car on the street if it had like 10,000 miles I would have 100% kept it well, it's like it's not I need to like rephrase it. it's not that those cars don't already look like a race car on the street but yeah. that one was taken to the next yeah. level it was full sin so I did exhaust it every the whole nine on it the usual and but it had high miles and it started to sketch me out but I'll I'm not gonna get into that so now I'm gonna go into the dailies now so the m5 I had it it was a lot of car and kind of expensive for what I wanted for a daily so I was like I don't want to spend this much so I traded in, which is a weird shift, but it was it worked out for an M2, which on the TikTok, that's the most commented. Bro traded an M5 for an M2. And hold on, I have to say this. When I'm trading, there's it's not like a straight trade. This is like I'm trading in, getting trade credit, and then I'm saving money on taxes by trading in, and then I add money on top. Basically, that's it's not straight trade. I got the M2 for 54 grand, 2018, and it was a fun little car. We took it to the mountain. I took it to the mountains. I mean, it was cool. I enjoyed driving it as well. It was like a little go kart, little go kart daily driver, nice and nimble. But I can't. I'm I'm not gonna sit here and say it. like, dude, the best daily driver that you had was that M5 all yeah. day long. So I traded the M2 in because it didn't, the size didn't work, and I got a Range Rover Velar, which is the worst car I've owned. Hated terrible, that car. Terrible. The most annoying thing ever in that car. You you know what it is. Start, you had stop. to turn off the auto start stop. You have to click like. Four different There's screens, two screens over. but it it's felt like, like four. Yo, just turn off. Yeah, it was bad. It would like, you'd like come to a stop and it would like shut off as you're trying to go. And then it would like on simple stops on every single time you came to a half a second stop. Like, don't get me wrong. That stuff is good. It is good to have that on your car. But also if it doesn't work, it can become the most annoying thing yep. ever. And the build quality on that car was way different from the like full size of sports. So I got rid of that car quick also. That was three so months because I was like, this, this car sucks. I, no. If you have any recommendation, I would spend a little bit more on like a sport, even to go older because it's just that much better. So <clears throat> next, uh, I had the GT3 RS and I made a $10,000 bet. I talked about it in the Haas video. Go watch that. I made a bet that I'd keep it for a year. That and the M2. That didn't work. I, I, I don't know. I know what happened. That mileage on the uh, GT3 RS was high, and the pro it was going to be hard to sell that thing because yeah, once what you was got on it up it, another ten thousand miles, it would it would have just been impossible. Yeah, there was a forty thousand mile uh, GT3 RS for sale for like eight months. That was uh, two hundred thousand dollars, and their their low miles were trading for two ninety. So it's like you can't sell; nobody wants it. So I ended up finding a dealer that offered me like almost close to what I paid for it, and. I was like, you know, I want to downsize my weekend car and get something a little different, try something out. So I traded it for a 2021 Cayman GT4 for, I paid 145,000 for it. It was Nardo gray carbon buckets. It was, it was a clean car. It was, it was a good looking car, but it, it was wasn't slow. like, it was a, it was in my opinion, like there's no other way I can think of. Like, I don't want to sit here and be like, oh, it's such a downgrade, but it really it was is, like, yeah. It just wasn't the same car. It was just not that it was like weird. It was a super nice car. It was nice a manual car. too, which was, that's what I kind of wanted to just get the manual. It just wasn't enough. Yeah. And I wanted to get that because I was like, I kind of want to get a GT4 RS. So maybe I can have this and then trade it in towards a GT4 RS, even though I could trade any car or whatever. But, but I wasn't getting an allocation. You took that GT4 and ended up, I hopped in the car with this dude, went all the way up to Pennsylvania, had no wait, wait, clue. Before that, before that. The GT4 is a manual. My one gripe about it, I went just doing a, a mountain run with my buddies yeah, yeah. and I was doing a pull with my buddy Chandler on his GT3 and I go to put it in a second and it just, no, nothing happens. It, it goes into nothing. And I was like, what's going on? I put it back in third and it worked. So I was like, oh, you know, I had the bottom gears. I had second, fourth, and sixth. It'd go into fourth, but it wouldn't go in third. It would just be nothing. So the clutch, nothing would work. So... I ended up doing this mountain run with like Carrera GTs and stuff. It was like six of us. It was crazy. I only had three gears. I ended up the the cord, the uh, linkage, shift the link, linkage. shifter linkage was is plastic and pops off easy on those cars. It's stupid. And it was a two second fix when I took it to the dealer. Well, for a car that you're supposed to be ripping gears in. Yeah, I was literally like and that I, is the I, dumbest. And thing. it wasn't like my first manual. Like I had my daily was a manual for for whatever two years. So that happens, but. Um, 
I had the car and I was like, this ain't it. Uh, it's great. But when you it's had a not. three RS, it's not it when you have a three RS. You didn't even take that car to the track because you knew it wasn't it just based off the first mountain. And run. I scheduled a track day. It's great for the mountains. Perfect for the mountains. I was going faster than like 488s because it was so nimble. That is a, if you want to have a car like that, that is a better daily driver version of that car than the RS was for yep. sure. So I find a ultraviolet purple three RS, which is like the ultimate three RS up in Pennsylvania. Like the three RS bro. Like we had 12,000 miles or something like that. 11,000 miles. So I didn't tell, I told Nick, we're going up to Pennsylvania and we're driving my GT4 and I didn't tell him why. I was like, we got a surprise up there. I had already done the deal and shout out to Pittsburgh Porsche. Great. Awesome guys. The GM's son watched my videos. I ended up bringing him a pair of shoes for the kids and uh, we worked a deal. It was $219,000 for that car, which is roughly worth about that now. And because the car market's going down a bit, this was in the height and we drive up there and I surprised Nick. And I said, we're picking up a car because we drove straight there in a monsoon. Dude, in a monsoon. Six hours of rain. Bro, I was the whole time we're hydroplaning and stuff because we're on uh, Sport Cup 2s. So we get up there, surprise Nick with the car. I mean, the whole trip, I had a little bit in the back of my mind that we could be going up here for a car. But honestly, like I had no clue. And we also tied it in. We went and picked up some shoes and filmed a video. We stayed for a night in downtown Pittsburgh. So drive up there, make the deal, get the purple RS. And, um, yeah, I had, it was like, that was amazing. I love that. That was, that was the best trade that you have made out of everything that you've said. Best trade you've made GT four for GT three RS finally got to the GT three RS back and it is in the sickest color. You can possibly have that car. So I had the Velar and the three RS purple. I traded the Velar in, um, shortly after I got an Audi S five, a 2019 bit 56 grand. I had the three RS and then. I bought, in addition, a 2018 AMG GTR for 175000 So I had two of these cars. You guys don't even know about this car. Yeah, I don't. I didn't talk much about it. But um, that car was gorgeous, bro. It was sick. I paid one seventy five, which now it's that would be like one fifty. Uh, it had a crazy massive hood splitter. It was matte black or matte gray from the factory. It was like whatever matte. And um, I had those two cars, and then I was like. I don't need freaking two of these cars. Like there's, I don't at all. So then, need them. then the R8 happened, right? That was next. Cause I had the, oh my God, there's a lot of music. I don't think you guys can hear it, but we just got blasted. We went back, you went back. I don't, I don't think there was anything in between. I just remember you had the purple RS for a while and it was like, I'm selling it. I'm not driving it. And then all of a sudden it was gone. And then I don't know where we went from there. I think I, so I, I don't remember a little bit in there, even though it wasn't that long ago. Um, I ended up, the R8 came for sale. So I had the AMG GTR for a couple months. Car was sick, drove it around. Yeah, that's what happened. So you found what you're about to say while you still own those cars. So the first R8 that I bought, that was my dream one. I was always looking for another one because there's not many for sale. I found one for sale for $199,000, which is ridiculous. Even it was the peak of the market, but I knew that car wasn't worth it. And I was searching literally every uh, other week I'd go on and look for one just to see, cause I want to see one. I mean, at some point, dude, there were what, two or three of them for sale. Yeah. Um, then one popped up that 30,000 miles on it. And I was like, mine had 30,000 miles. It was in Texas. And I, so I looked into it and I'm, my list has gone away. I looked into it. And it turns out I have my window sticker right here. I still had it. I looked at same bin. I was like, that's my car. I was like, I got to buy it. I have to buy this as car. Soon, as soon as you found out that it was your car, dude, it was over. Because like, I, I, and if I didn't, if that car did not come for sale, I was not getting rid of that GTR. I freaking love that car. So I, at the time I was like, I, I'm not going to, I can't have these three cars. I'm trying to think of the, the correlation of how it went, but I basically did a trade in for the GTR for the R8. I had gas motor cars go out and buy the car for me from the guy. It was a private sale. So he bought it from the guy, shipped it in because they do all that a lot easier than I can. And then I traded in my AMG GTR for like tax savings and bought my R8 from them for 168000 Now I sold it for 150 um, back then. I think that's the number. When I saw so it, it was like I paid, I paid a little bit more, but not like crazy too much more. And I, bu- I got the car back. And so I had that, 
at the same time, I ended up buying, I think a little bit before that, I ended up buying a 2011 Subaru STI as a film car. I remember that. It was that so was, random. That was like, I was literally about this. You took the words right out of my mouth. That was like one of the most random <laughs> things. It was like, okay, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. It was fun. Like you want, I think you wanted to have like a manual again, but then you were like, ah, why do I keep doing this to myself? It was a, it was a aggressive manual because it was modded, but it was cool. I was like, we can film with it, make more car content. We didn't end up really doing that. It wasn't bad. It just like, it got kind of old after a little while. Yeah. And then I traded that in for a 2018 M3. Again, I love M3s apparently. Uh, competition. It was a nice black on black. That was it was a good it was a automatic. I had that before. I had fifteen, but it was a manual. I got an automatic. Those, are, automatic. those are dual clutch, right? Yeah. yeah driving so, that car, that was I won't say it was as fun as the manual version, but that car fucking ripped. Like, and then I got the after that I traded in that M three and got a twenty twenty Range Rover Sport, which is my daily now black. It's matte black. And so the current garage as it sits is that my original R8, I modded it, did everything even bigger this time. I have the R8, my Range Rover Sport and Sophie's Q5. So that's 30 cars and the total amount spent not, I didn't pay, I didn't buy them all at once at this price. The cost of those cars for the price that I paid for them total was $2,835,500. Almost $3 million in cars. I didn't buy it all at once. I didn't spend $3 million and buy a bunch of 30 cars, but that means an average price of almost a hundred grand. So tell me, we just didn't take the biggest full circle ever. <laughs> we just did the craziest. And that loop tells you to get so, back. As I look back and stuff, I'm like, yeah, I should have just kept the R8. But I also, in this time where the car market shifted, I had so much fun yeah. doing this, and I was able to break even. Or in the last year, I was able to break even or make money. I only really made money on one car. But like I broke even or like a thousand here, a thousand there, but it's all whatever. And I'd sell like mods. I take the mods off and sell them, but there's a full circle moment. And so that's where we are now. And we've been going for so long. So I'm going to just get into like what's going on right now. Um, I tried to, I was trying to trade in my wife, my wife's Q5 leases up. I'm buying it out and I was going to trade it in. She liked, really liked my Range Rover Sport. Um, she, the size is good and all that. That was like one of her worries. So I was like, okay. I'm going to buy your car at a lease. You can have the Range Rover and I'll trade that car in. It's worth like 30 grand and get something else. And that'll be my daily. So I go to do that. And I almost made a deal, like literally almost made a deal. And then Sophie was like, no, I want my Audi. I don't want the Range Rover anymore. So she's keeping it. So I've been, and I, the same car that I was going to trade in on, I still kind of want. I'm waiting to see if the deal works. Um, but I'm looking at a 2020 G550 blacked out new g-wagon as my daily we'll have that the q5 she wants to keep it i tried guys and then the r8 i almost uh the past couple of weeks i was looking at instead of getting a g-wagon getting like another fun car but i was like no i'm not doing it. the reason why i'm looking at it is because the prices are coming down now uh, i think the it's it's cool to be looking at the g-wagon and the biggest thing that like we always come down to is these cars that we that he has as a daily have got to be practical for filming. Like, yeah, like we can make stuff work in some of these like more fun cars. But when you get into an SUV like the Range Rover or like a G Wagon, we're riding around all day. It's super comfortable, and we can put everything in there without having to stress out. So it ends up working out. I feel like even though you might not have as much fun in that kind of car, I feel like you're more comfortable. You're more yeah. relaxed. But once I spend a little bit more on like the Range Rover Sport. And realize like when I mod it right and spend the right money on it, I enjoy it. And I've been enjoying driving that Range Rover so much. So I think the G Wagon be a similar experience. I wouldn't get a G sixty three. They're not down to what I want yet. And I'm not I don't want to spend two hundred grand on a daily. That's ridiculous. But I do notice that when I I get a daily that I truly enjoy driving, like the Range Rover, I drive it a lot more and I don't worry about driving the R eight. Cause like I would before the R eight, I just like have I, I I can barely drive it now and I have to find reasons to drive it. So um, that's kind of where I'm at. And G wagons hold their value um, very well. Even though they're coming down now, they, they're a car that really holds their value. Well, even before the car boom, you couldn't get an allocation for a G wagon. They would go over sticker. That was like the one oh, car. Were, that was like the most popular car and yeah. the hardest car to get. So that's where it leaves us. Um, you get a little inside of my mind. It's crazy and psychotic, but and my wife goes nuts. Nick goes nuts. Cause at this point, my wife's like, I don't want to hear about it. And See, I talked to Nick about I don't, it. I don't mind it. I want you to know, like, I'm going to say here right now, you don't bother me by it. I just want you to know, like, 
bro, looking at the whole picture over and over again, I just, you guys, I am as real as I can possibly be with this dude about the scenarios. Yeah, yeah. No, he is. And that you need people. You can't just have people saying whatever. Yeah, you I can't say. be just agreeing with everything that he wants to do. But when I get something in my mind, I'm doing it, basically. Yeah, I mean, there's no stopping this dude, regardless. Yeah. So that's the crazy story. Um, I thought it's good to give that foundation to you guys. I think it's fun. And I, I like one day, maybe I'll get to 100 cars and make a movie. I don't know. But so he's on car 30. I'm on car three. My wife's on car two. So it's wild. But would I have changed anything for it? No. I've had fun. And the money aspect, like I haven't taken huge losses and all that. Like no. if I was losing $10,000 every car, pff, no, no it would, shot. It would be so dumb to be losing that much money. But realistically, over the entire period, you've maybe lost like just like a slight I amount. I probably lost like. I, don't, I honestly could put a number on it, but it's not what it, because the car market, the biggest thing is the car market went up and I used that to my advantage. I would say you haven't lost more than like 10. Overall? Yeah. Like uh, pro- I mean, 15? probably. I don't know. I'll just say like 20, but yeah, I mean, again, like, but that makes sense. Even if it's $40,000, let's say it's $40,000, which you is- You can a, lose that on one car. You can. And like, imagine that over a scale of three years and I've had 20 different cars, like, to, I don't know. So- that was long. That was probably an hour and a half episode. That was intense. Thank you guys for watching. That was long. It was way better to do that with Nick here rather than myself because I, I, by the end of my episode, I was like, ugh, talking so much. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe. We are on Apple Mu- App Music. Yeah, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Check that link down Let's below. Go. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode next week. See ya. Peace.